Welcome to our channel, where we bring you the latest updates on the most thrilling cars in the market. Porsche introduced its new third-generation Panamera earlier this year with the base and Turbo SE hybrid models. This latest Panamera maintains the sleek flair that distinguishes it from most modern luxury set-ins with their huge grills, blunt profiles, and garish details. In many regards, the Panamera continues to resemble a four-door 911, and it comes in numerous varieties, just as the 911 does. With the two bookends of the lineup established, Porsche is now adding the 4 and 4 SE hybrids, which employ the same plug-in hybrid powertrain elements introduced to the V8 powered Turbo S. For these models, Porsche is employing the twin turbo 2.9 liter V sticks from the previous S model. The electric part of the powertrain is the same upgraded one fitted to the Turbo S, consisting of a 187 electric motor with 331 pound feet of torque and a 21.8 kilowatt hours battery. The higher capacity battery is not much heavier than the old 14.3 kilowatt hours one because the improved energy capacity comes from new cell chemistry rather than from simply more cells. Overall dimensions for the battery, which is mounted below the cargo floor, are about the same. In fact, thanks to other design changes, the cargo capacity under the hatchback has increased by about one cubic foot, though it's still down about two cubes compared with the non-hybrid models. The new motor is more thoroughly integrated into the 8-speed PDK transmission, sharing a transmission's oil cooling and switching from external to an internal rotor design. These changes reduce rotational inertia, keep the motor operating at optimal temperature, and shed 11 pounds. In the 4E Hybrid, this motor is coupled to a 300-horsepower version of the 2.9-liter engine with 309 pound-feet of torque. In combination with the electric motor 463 horsepower and maximum torque of 479 pound-feet are available. That's about the same total power as the old E-Hybrid but with less torque, mostly because the V6 engine has been downrated from the previous generation. With the 4S E-Hybrid, the story is similar. The new V6 makes 348 ponies and 368 pound-feet, down 92 horsepower and 38 pound-feet from last year's model. The same electric motor used in the non-SE hybrid makes up much of the difference, but final total output comes to 536 horsepower and 553 pound-feet, the same torque as last year, but fewer ponies. Despite these downgrades in output, Porsche claims that both models are slightly quicker and faster than their outgoing equivalents despite being 50 to 60 pounds heavier. After spending a few hours in the two new models, we won't argue with those claims. We started our drive with a fully charged battery in e-hybrid mode, which meant running solely on the electric motor unless we towed heavily into the throttle or exceeded 87 miles per hour. Despite weighing a claimed 50-16 pounds, the 4E hybrid was quick enough for normal commuting without engaging the V6, and these P8 EVs come only with all-wheel drive. The electric range has yet to be established according to the EPA protocols, but given that the battery capacity has increased by about 50% and the daily LTP range has grown some 80% on the similarly enhanced Canny E-Hybrid last year, we would expect the EPA electric range to increase from 19 to at least 30 miles. Once you use up the energy in the battery or select a drive mode that always engages the V-Sticks, the Panamera feels very energetic. Porsche claims a 60 miles per hour time of 3.9 seconds and a quarter mile of 12.6 seconds, not far off its numbers for the base 911 Carrera. Perhaps more important, the e-hybrid gains speed effortlessly, with a powerful electric motor supplementing the torque while the turbo spools up at lower um. And will you keep your foot in it, the V6 wins out with a subtle but satisfying snarl. Just make sure you turn off the enhanced sound which generates a synthetic drone at low revs. Despite having 73 more horsepower and 74 more pound-feet, the 4SE hybrid doesn't feel much quicker than its lesser sibling, though Porsche claims it gets to 60 in 3.5 seconds and through the quarter in 12 seconds flat, with the generous electric power bolstering throttle response. The muscular differences between the two cars are simply not very noticeable. Nor are their road manners very different. The 4E Hybrid comes shod with standard 19-inch wheels and 265 by 45 and 295 by 40 tires, while the Forest comes with 20s, 275 by 40s and 315 by 35s. Both of our sample cars were fitted with their optional setups, the 20 inches on the 4 and 275 by 35 and 325 by 30 Michelin Pilot Sports 5 tires on 21-inch wheels on the 4S. More important, both cars were equipped with Porsche Active Ride, 
a new $7,150 auction over the now standard and redesigned Porsche Active Suspension Management. The AM PSM should be changed to adaptive since there's nothing active about it. It uses two valve adjustable dampers combined with two chamber air springs. Porsche Active Ride, on the other hand, is the real deal with the 400 volt electro hydraulic pump at each corner capable of providing 2,200 pounds of force up or down. The need for high voltage will restrict this option to e-hybrid Panameras and 800 volt taken EVs. In other words, this system can actively raise and lower wheels rather than simply reacting to suspension inputs, and it can do so in less than 50 milliskins. The system incorporates a single chamber air spray, so no energy is required to simply support the car nor are anti-roll bars required. The system even offers a mode in which the Panamera leans into corners, leans forward under acceleration, and leans backwards under braking. But more important than these circus tricks is the uncanny composure this suspension provides. Whether driving calmly or quickly, the Panamera's body hardly moves, almost no dive, squat, roll, or even up and down motion. The bumps and dips of the pavement were almost completely smothered with only a bit more noise than motion. Of course, this was on famously smooth German pavement, but this system seems like a major step forward in suspension design. The 4SE Hybrid, also with this Porsche Active Ride and even with 21-inch wheels and tires did not feel harsher. Driven quickly, both cars perform very well, particularly if you select Sport or Sport Plus mode. Those modes from the suspension hold the lower gears longer to raise engine arm and sharpen throttle response. And while the suspension seems to tighten slightly, ride comfort remains excellent. Steering feel and brake actuation is also linear and consistent. These third generation Panameras have a fully electronic dash with a variety of options, but it is possible to call up a traditional five dial layout. Thankfully, there are hard buttons for the various AVAC functions on the glossy black panel on the center console, along with a big knob for volume control. Interior space is decent with good room in the back seat, though not as much as some of the more upright luxury sedans provide. A BMW 7 Series, for example, sits almost three inches higher. In the usual Porsche fashion, you'll have the pony up for this goodness. The base 4 e-hybrid starts at $117,495 and the car we drove is festooned with $43,560 of options, bringing the total to $163,050. The Forest starts at $128,795 and have an even heavier $60,240 option load, bringing the total to $191,030, or roughly the base price of the 670 Panamera Turbo E-Hybrid. EPA figures haven't yet been released for the new models, which will go on sale later this year. A buyer will be unlikely to quickly recoup the nearly $6,000 premium for the addition of the electric drive almost 13 grand compared with the base rear drive Panamera. But the superb throttle response and the option of adding the Porsche Active Ride suspension make this a PHEV that one might sensibly select for reasons other than fuel efficiency. Thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time, keep chasing your dreams and embracing the thrill of the road and drive safe.